The scripture reading for the 26th Sunday after Pentecost is from Psalm 98, which is read responsibly. Please read the words in bold print. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. Trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. The rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy for the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with, e with equity. The word of the Lord. The gospel for this Sunday is recorded in the gospel of Luke chapter 21, and you may be, remain seated for its reading. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was ordained, ordained with the beautiful storms and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another and all will be thrown down. They asked him, teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware. Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name say, and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in the various places famines and plagues and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a new song being sung. Can you hear it? It's a song that reminds us that we are going to never ever be alone. And no matter what is coming our way and whatever wounds that we're bearing, we have a God who says, I will never ever leave you by yourself. That's hope. My good friend Bob Hurlbut had his captain's license and that meant that he had the ability to lease a sailboat in St. Thomas. And a group of us sailed from St. Thomas up to Sir Francis Drake all of, through that beautiful area. If you've been there before, Jos van Dyke and the Baths at Spanish Town and, and uh, Beef Island, they're all so beautiful. But I had to return quicker than the rest of the, the gang, so they said they will get us back to St. Thomas a quicker way. And upon return, they brought us out into, Bob said we have to go out into the Atlantic Ocean and come straight, in, straight south of there. Well, we did that only to encounter a very strong northern, north, northeastern wind. It was right on our tail, and the swells were four to six foot high. And if you want to ask of a farm boy who had never sailed before if I was nervous, yes. 
Some of us got sick, but we were all clinging to what we could because we did not know how this boat was going to come around. Through it all, I remember hearing Bob say to us, trust the rudder, trust the rudder, hold firm to the wheel which control that rudder that goes down and gives guidance to the ship, to the sailboat. Trust the rudder. Friends, isn't that really what we're longing for when we are living in a storm of our life? Something that we can be confident that we're not going to be left adrift and the wind is not going to destroy us and the waves are not going to throw us one way or another without the fact that we can get to the direction where we need to go. Trust the rudder. That's what we really are longing for in the challenging days of our life. And in the scripture that I just read from Luke, we have understood this to be a prediction or a foretaste of what is to come at the end days, we have called it. Well, in scripture, friends, the end days is the whole time from the time of Jesus' resurrection to the time that he returns. It isn't just those events at the very, very tail end of that life here. The point that I'm saying is that what Jesus is talking about is not something that was going to be a sign for something great out there, but it's going to be the way in which that we experience life as we live it each and every day of our lives. We're gonna encounter times in which that it seems like those important foundations and those buildings like the temple will feel like it's being shook apart and rocks are falling away from it. We're gonna find that even though relationships that were meant to be wholesome and life-giving can be troublesome. And even the things that we've been hoping that would be life-giving become something that drains us of energy. Jesus seemed to be saying to his followers, don't be surprised when these storms come. But, but he says, as you encounter them, don't be led astray. What he was really saying is that I promise that I am going to be with you. You are never going to be left alone. And there will be others trying to get you to follow them, to think that if you just do things their way, that you will avoid the storms. Jesus says, don't be led astray. And then Jesus says, don't be afraid. Maybe some of us are encountering a challenge right now of life. Fear is such a natural, natural follow-up to a disaster or a storm. Jesus says, don't be afraid. I'm going to be with you. When Jesus predicted that that temple that was the adorning center place of all of Israel in their worship of God, when he said that that stones are going to be falling apart in that temple, they must have said, Jesus, you just don't understand. It took 70 years for us to build this temple, and you think that it's going to be coming down? It just can't happen. But friends, it did happen. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if those man-made institutions like that temple that fell on that day sometimes aren't crumbling around us today. I think of the church as an organization, as an institution that is gathered together for the purpose of hearing God's word and doing its work, but as an organization, as an institution, I think that there's something falling apart in the church. Think about it. Many of us, when we were young, if we went to a church, and if it was a Lutheran church, and we went to confirmation, we may have gone through, through our days in college when faith wasn't important to us, but we found ourselves back into church after a period of time. Our young people aren't finding their ways back into church anymore. I think the voice that I hear from many of our young adults saying, I don't know what the relevance of the church as an institution has for me anymore. Not a bad question. But it's doing what I think that Jesus was predicting, that sometimes these man-made institutions are going to be challenged, and it feels like they're crumbling right before us. And the reason why the church needs to be challenged about it of its relevance for its people, because we need to be clear that the reason why we exist, and the only reason we exist as God's people, is not to put up a structure and to provide some property and a staff, but that we might proclaim Jesus as the hope of the world. Maybe that's what we need to hear when we hear the challenge to the relevancy question. You see, Jesus is predicting that many of us will have times of life when we're gonna be challenged. Maybe some of us have had health issues this past year. Maybe some of us have some concerns about aging parents and we don't know what way to go. Some of us may have questions about jobs and 
what we should be doing about the future, Jesus says, don't be led astray. Don't be afraid. Many of us have tasted the dreadful pain of grief this year. Some of us have had some issues and complications in our family life that we never could have predicted. Jesus says, don't be afraid. I am with you. Keep your hand on the rudder seems to be the theme of this text today. Jesus is saying that we will never ever be entering the storm or experiencing the storm without his presence being right there. This text is a grounded in hope. When the world seems to be closing in on us and we, we can't find that light or that direction to go, Jesus says, trust me, don't be afraid and keep your hand on the rudder that will guide you. And so we read the psalm that we heard Jan read earlier, where the psalmist says, we'll sing a new song. What that new song is, folks, is a song of hope. The newness that he's talking about is that we are given a hope that will always be with us no matter where we are, and we will never be left alone. That's the song of hope that this world is longing to sing with us. Reaching out with the voice of hope, that's our mission statement. I could think of a more bold proclamation of what we are about than saying as a congregation, we want to reach out with the voice of hope to our young people, to the people that visit, and the people that come here looking for some food or, or some money for gasoline, that we can be a voice of hope. Friends, as we enter this new chapter of leadership in our country, we hunger for hope, don't we? as we've all experienced, whether it's on television or relationships with people that may have been on the other side of the fence from us politically, we've had seen and experienced far too many wounds and harsh clashes that have really marked our country. We long to hold on to a hope that says we are not going to be stuck there. Division and rancor does not have to be the way that we live going forward. And Jesus would want to promise us that we can be people that long for a justice that begins right here at home. How we speak to each other and to those who may be on the other side of the political fence from us. When friends in school turn on you and family don't understand you, hold on to that anchor, that rudder of hope. When life seems to be going nowhere and you don't know how to go, go forward and disappointments seem to be building up, hold on to that rudder of hope that Jesus has for you. With his hand firmly fixed upon the rudder of hope, Pastor Steve Garnes Holmes has written this poem entitled, I Will Sing. God of peace, fill me with your mercy. When others around me are anxious, give me peace. Though anger Cloud people's vision, open my eyes. When others blame and threaten, may I listen. In the midst of cruelty, may I be gentle and kind. May there be only blessing in my words and my hands. And when the stench of abuse fills the air, when oppression demands a seat at the table, protect the tender ones, heal the wounded, and vindicate the gentle, and give me courage to attend. God of peace, bless me, that when the world cries violence, I will sing peace. When the world spouts hatred, I will sing justice. When the world shouts fear, I will sing love. When the world shouts, I will sing. I will sing. Friends, this is the spirit one holding firmly to the rudder of Christ's promise. May each of us in our own place in this world, no matter what we are experiencing, be firm about our grip, holding on to the life-changing promise of Christ's love. And in so doing, we join the chorus that is singing a new song, a song of hope.